recently asked me who I thought was the best ranged legendary lord and I'm going to arbitrarily limit this to foot only ranged legendary lords so we're going to exclude like the Luther Harkon and the Sisters of Twilight and talk about foot only ranged legendary lords as Marcus Wolfhart and Elithanar tee off on each other. I'm going with Marcus Wolfhart for ve one very very simple reason. He's got a net. He's the only ranged legendary lord including the other two I mentioned that can fly. Um, that has a, a net, like a straight-up net ability. I mean, you've got the, the Glady, of course, the generic Wood Elf Lord, who has Prey of Anathrame, a single-target net, but that in and of itself makes him the best because, of course, net is very good, the most competitive ability for range. But let's take a look at the overall builds here as they're already already getting to the fun. A couple of Mortars here, a couple of Spearmen, two Flagellants, Sigmar Sons, Spearmen with Shields, Steam Tank, Royal Altar Graphite's Marcus for the Empire. Uh, caster? Do they even have a caster? Yes, indeed. They have a Lore Beast caster coming in on the side here. Uh, of course, for the High Elves, Shadow Warriors up front taking some damage from the Mortars, Rangers, Spearmen, uh, Alithanar, uh, Lore Master of Hoeth. We've got the Doppelganger up already. Some White Lions in the back line, some more Reavers over on the side. So, ranged Legendary Lords. Uh, Marcus, not only that, but he has legit damage, especially anti-large. He does a lot more damage than Alithnar, uh in terms of DPS. He doesn't have the same range, but uh, yeah, 450 yeah. missile damage, 230 AP with 120 bonus versus large, meaning shooting any kind of monstrous target, he will do a significant amount of damage. He's also longer range than Oxyodl, 300 range on Alithanar, 180 range on Marcus. I'd have to look again. I think Oxyodl is like 160. Um, so in that sense, he's a, a good middle ground between the two. Uh, you could argue that Oxyodl scaling damage is just generally better than sort of the high anti-large damage, and I would broadly agree with that, but of course Oxyodl does not have a net. That being said, uh, High Elves are doing their best to push up here. Flagellant's getting some pretty decent engagements, but here in the center this is not going to be good for the Sigmar Sons. Altdorf Griffites and the Demigriff Knights did kind of come in and collapse, and the Empire player playing aggressively with the Steam Tank, using it as kind of a... A line disruptor chariot, which is uh, one of the good uses for it. I do think here, a little bit of point criticism for the Empire player. Keeping, you know, these archers out of... Oh man, look at that Amber Spear. That was ridiculous. Almost missed that, but uh, yeah, that Amber Wizard just got like 70 kills on Elves on <laughs> Amber Spear. Anyway, I would pull the Steam Tank back and start like just charging through these lines here and trying to cause terror routes from side and rear charges rather than just zoning the archers out, which is fine, but Altdorf Griffite's coming back around as well. Uh, Marcus is just continuing to trade. He's trading directly into Alithnar. Alithnar can probably beat him, just because Alithnar can run back here. He has a much longer range, right? So if he's taking advantage of that, he can just shoot Marcus while Marcus can't get at him. But currently, he's within Marcus's range. Marcus is taking good, good advantage of that nice aim shot there. I guess Marcus has a little bit of scaling damage in that uh, kill shot, so to speak. Uh, not quite the same as Oxyodl, but still like a slight, you know, small version of that. Mortar's still online, at least they were until these Reavers just shut them down. They've got some Spearmen to protect those, so the crews could get back online. This crew could also get back online here, unless those White Lines deal with them. But, yeah, things are looking pretty close still. Lithnar with his Doppelganger up. The issue is there's not a lot of tools for dealing with the Royal Althor Crypt Fights, with the White Lions sort of being away. They are the best unit for taking down these Demigriff Knights. The other unit of Dem Demis with Halberds did just get kind of get outmodeled and shot down there, which is also something that can happen. A no missile block chance. 125 armor is very good, but with that Elven volume of fire, if they're able to get some units back, start shooting in on the side here. Should be pretty good. Nice block of doom, though, from uh, Empire. Going to be draining these high elf units that remain in this center pocket. Suddenly the uh, lore master all by himself there. Uh, Lithnar still fighting and probably going to finish off. Ooh, Moonbow not quite finishing off that Amber Wizard, I have to say. In terms of abilities, a Lithnar's Doppelganger Summon is cool. It's fairly unique. He has some okay, like, AoE buffs, but it's definitely not the best. Steam Tank still just kind of tangled up in some random units over here. 
which is fine. Uh, evidently, it's fine. Uh, Lithnar now in a little bit of trouble. Let's see, though. There's Shadow, uh, Shadow Warriors, more Shadow Warriors here shooting uh, these Reavers even on a rear charge on these Royal Altar Griff fights with their 40 charge bonus will be able to do some damage. Lots of infantry models moving in as well. The Rangers, again, not really meant to fight large armored units, but let's see what they can do. Just because they're high model count, the fact that they get their charge bonus on the charge here might help them out. They're not exactly great weapons, but some spears move in as well, and it's very much a combined arms effort for the High Elves to try and finish off the Altar Griff fights. But man, just look at the Reavers get shredded there once the uh, Demis turn around and actually start fighting. Uh, Sigmar Sons are still fighting over here as well, although they are in a pretty desperate situation. Warmaster managed to get away. But look at that, Mortar's back online, indeed. We got this Mortar back, the other Mortar. Uh, the crew does appear to be back, uh, coming back at least. Meanwhile, the White Lion's kind of, again, just getting outmodeled and dragged down by lots and lots of stuff. Marcus, still with a little bit of ammunition left, very commanding presence in terms of his positioning here. He has, like, shots on almost all of the health units that remain. He can kind of pick and choose, so nice positioning from the Empire player. The Royal of Griffites eventually do get just kind of dragged down, as I mentioned. It's sort of the story of low model count cavalry right now. But uh, still, probably actually got some okay value. We'll have to take a look after the fact and see. At this point, balance power definitely in High Elves' favor, as uh, Marcus is one of the few units that remain. But uh, Mortars are getting a couple last few shots here. Nice use of the Shadow Warriors to actually break them. Some healing as well for the Lore Master and some of these Rangers, but uh, he, uses, he uses his net to catch those spearmen. And it should be said, the net does appear to be affected by the AoE bug, where it catches more units, and oof! Warmaster takes that one to the face, just like pushes him back, doesn't even knock him over. That's pretty impressive, man. All things considered, almost like a little anime knockback there. Oof, nice hit to the side. Marcus, though, at uh, 42 speed with his little thingy active, can outrun the Loremaster. Uh, we'll see, the Loremaster with his charge animation active, I don't know actually how fast he is, but I hear a steam tank, it's got 140, 84 HP left, so things are looking very, very dicey here for the Empire if they lose too many units, but this Mortar gets some more critical shots here, will they actually land is the question, Mortar is of course famously inaccurate, that one does get a hit there, will it break the Rangers, no, their leadership does hold, so High Elves in a decent position. The issue is Marcus himself still pretty healthy, and in terms of a melee combatant, Marcus is not a complete pushover. His weapon strength isn't amazing. 360 is kind of okay. It's not great, but 58-45 is decent. 45 melee defense is not amazing, but he does have 30 charge as well. Uh, I myself did win a game once by cycle charging Noctilus to death with Marcus, so it can be done. <laughs> Um, but the steam tank, really clutch, accurate steam tank shot there, plus a few more shots from Marcus, actually finishes off the Lore Master. Another really good hit from the steam tank there. And, uh, I mean, it's got, like, yeah, still only 132 HP. These uh, Shadow Walkers used up the last of their ammunition, desperately trying to take it down. But the Mortar Crew shattered at this point. That's good. Marcus only has four more shots left, so he's got to be careful about how he uses it. Alithnar also has a few shots, doing some good damage to those uh, spearmen with shields there. Probably wants to save his ammo to try and finish off the steam tank, but let's fast forward a little bit here through this late game as Marcus uses the last of his shots. Uh, finishing off, wow, clutch final hit there on the lore master. Looks like Alithnar actually shot Marcus himself with his last, and what just happened with that net there? I'm not really sure. I did actually somehow hit all these Reavers, but oh man, the Steam Tank side-shotting through the Reavers basically finishes them off. Uh, the Steam Tank, despite being so low for quite a while, has been able to generate some really nice value. Help Empire get back in this. And Spearmen are holding some kind of a line, at least momentarily. Another brutal hit there, and Alithnar himself taking it on the chin. A lot of people forget, but the, the Steam Tank's missile attack is not just a cannon. It actually does, like, monstrous single-entity level damage. Like, uh, compare this missile attack to, like, a, a Shagoth's melee attack, right? Like, no anti-large, obviously, but still a lot of armor-piercing damage on that hit. I mean, not that the Lithnar has a lot of armor to go through, but just a lot of damage overall in that case. Marcus now getting into combat here, just kicking some elves in the face. 
Ooh, little roll in attack from a Lithanar as he beats up some of the spearmen. Yeah, I mean, none of the spearmen are still fighting. They're all just running at this point. But Marcus gets a hit on a Lithanar. These spearmen are chasing the steam tank, not allowing it to fire. But as soon as they get close, they get terrified. So that's not great. Reavers are chasing those spearmen, trying to finish them off. So. Man, looking pretty close. Balance power still favoring the High Elves. I almost wonder if Lithnark puts a rear charge into Marcus right here, if he's able to finish him off. But instead, he's detaching to try and finish the Steam Tank, which I understand gets a single Reaver model there. They do get a charge and take it down to 52 HP. Unfortunately, terrified down to 37. And the brutal net from Marcus, just absolutely devastating timing. Uh, and it can now just shoot a Lithnar directly in the face. Misses that one, thankfully. And the net does drop. The steam gun was uh, bravely, you know, uh, taken on the face by the Shadow Warrior. Oh, and that finished kill shot. That was a dope animation. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that animation. Little jumping, like, shoot there. Finishes off the steam tank. Oh, that's so cool, man. We all, we all see something new today. Now, Lithnar moving in with his Shadow Warriors. Marcus just tanking this blob of High Elf infantry, routing them all pretty much at this point, not taking much damage. The issue here is that, uh, I mean, the Spearmen really don't have much attack at all. Here comes Lithnar, though, getting a charge animation. Marcus moves to du duel, and a nice hit directly on Lithnar's face, and he's not gone, but he's just about gone. I mean, he's, he's got like 300 HP, so... Oof, is that an actual kill? No, it's not, but he did take damage on that hit. Alithnar Shatters actually does get killed by Marcus. And that should lead to army losses for the High Elves. So what a turnaround. Marcus, the true Chad Hart, just soloing this entire Elf late game army himself in melee. Uh, still over a thousand HP left. Just absolute hero of the Empire. <laughs> oh man, that jumping kill shot from Alithanar though, man, that was really cool. Some very good plays on both sides, some cool stuff. Decided to cast this game for that reason, but again, I do stand by Marcus Wolfhart being the best foot-only ranged legendary lord. Now there's an argument to be made for the Sisters of Twilight and for uh, uh, Archon, right, Luther Archon, that because they can fly around, that kind of gives them a distinct advantage but really in usage they are quite different and they're also i mean i'd have to look i think like kitted down sisters are about the same price as what you would pay for a kitted up marcus but of course harkon's way more expensive right so it's kind of hard to compare them but uh oh they're still fighting here wow these high elf spearmen are actually holding and uh, getting some damage in they've got marcus down below a thousand hp now 850 couple of hits there and he is getting pretty decent hits. I mean, 40 melee defense on them, 58 attack. He's not standard base hit chance. He's a bit above, probably about 50% chance to hit, give or take. But uh, now down below 800 HP, just getting poked. Elves leadership can't take it, though. And what a finish, man. Very, very wild finish. Thanks, for, thanks to the Emperor for sending that one in. And GG to both players, man. What a wild game. Love to see some Steam Tank action against the High Elves. This is probably right now the best matchup to use the Steam Tank. You can sometimes use it in Bretonia as well, um, depending on the situation. But it can be very risky also if the High Elves bring bolt throwers, as I have learned myself many times. But here they're able to perform quite well. The Mortar is also reasonably cost-effective. A raw alt of Griffites actually get like two thirds of their value, which is much better than what they normally do. The other demi Griff knights with halberds sort of show what they typically do. Uh, anyway, going to the infantry here, Sigmar Sun's fairly solid. The flagellants do decently as well. Spearmen with shields contributing quite well. 567 is actually really nice for them. Uh, I'm surprised the Amber Wizard didn't get more value with that brutal Amber Spear and some nice flocks of doom as well. But, uh, yeah, ultimately his defense being so low means that he is pretty easy to take down. And I think he probably got killed by some Reavers when I wasn't looking. Uh, Marcus, though, almost 3,000 damage value, 10,000 damage dealt. Anytime you're, uh, any unit caps 10,000 damage dealt, that is legit. <laughs> so Marcus proving he's a true Chad that beyond his nets, he is just a powerhouse. Um, so let's jump in for some comparisons here after we take a look at High Elves. Uh, Lithnar also no slouch, definitely getting a lot of value himself. Um, 
I think this is kind of indicative of an average of where these two would stand in my view. Marcus is just slightly ahead of Lithnar, but Lithnar is also very solid, especially for a, an Elven Lord. They're hard to be cost effective sometimes, so is is that definitely spearman also 700 value 600 value pretty good stuff you don't see that often from spearman but they do quite well against these higher value large targets for the empire um honestly the one sort of build criticism i have is these rangers should all be white lions just because they would have beat the cavalry and they would have beat the steam tank pretty convincingly in melee um like, in my opinion, there's just not a lot of reason to bring rangers in matchups where your opponent can bring heavy cavalry. Like, typically, like, empires are uh, probably the best example of this. Like, white lions will still be almost all empire infantry, um, just like rangers will, and they'll also trade much better against empire cavalry and steam tanks. You know, you might see the occasional wild steam tank, but uh, shadow warriors... Generally pretty decent. They're all fairly cost-effective here. Reavers also do an okay job. And just overall, very, very close game. Close games like that can come down to RNG quite a bit of uh, the time. It's small mistakes here and there as well. And, and like any number of those things going differently could have changed the outcome of the battle. But man, what a battle. Big thanks again for the Emperor sending that one in. Um, anyway, let's just quickly compare some ranged legendary lords. Uh, so, of course... Most factions do not have a foot-only range legendary lord, like please Yosef Bugman for the dwarves or, you know, something. Um, but we've got Marcus Wolfhart for the Empire. Uh, now for the High Elves, we've got uh, Lithnar, of course. And newly added to the club is Oxyodl. And am I forgetting anyone? That would be sad if I was. I don't think so when I look through the others here. Yeah, I mean, there are, are some ranged generic lords that are foot-only, like the, uh, uh, what is it, Master Assassin. Yeah, so we'll just stick with these guys for now as legendary lords, and just kind of compare the three. I mean, Oxyodl is the cheapest, right? If we go ahead and compare just regular base price, actually, maybe not. He is the same price as Alithnar, yeah, it's interesting to me. And the same price says, no, Marcus is 100 points cheaper. So that's already a point in Marcus's favor, looking at just how they are without any abilities. Immune to Psychology is also another point in Marcus's favor. Um, he, of course, doesn't have martial prowess, just worse stats, even baseline than a Lithnar. So Lithnar's attack and defense definitely going to be better. They also have exactly the same HP, which is interesting to me. Um, Marcus, 10 more armor. Uh, but Lithnar has five more leadership. Marcus does have this speed boost ability, but you have to pay for it. Uh, Lithnar is just faster baseline, which is arguably better. 40 more weapon strength as well, but uh, less ammunition and less damage output, which means just overall damage potential is lower for Lithnar. 120 extra range means you can stand and trade at distances that... Marcus cannot. Like, a Lithnar can act as a counter-artillery much better than Marcus. In that specific role, firing it like a cannon or uh, something like that, uh, Lithnar is going to be much better. That's not really something Marcus can do super effectively. Um, if we look at Oxyodl, he does magic and poison, which is definitely uh, two big benefits, um, especially as we move into game three. That magic damage will be very good against demon factions. Also, he has Strider, he has Missile Resistance, less HP, though, than these other two, and less armor. Uh, stats are comparable to Marcus, just slightly less melee attack. Much faster, though. The fastest, by far, of all three. Baseline, 400 weapon strength as well, so that's great. 30 charge, again, the same. Lots of ammunition, but he does have this kind of multi-shot, right? So, doesn't mean... It, Against larger single entities, he seems to be just as accurate, obviously. Against smaller single entities, though, because his damage is a little bit spread out, you could end up dealing less damage, but still, on paper, very good. I mean, the best damage on paper, right? DPS over 10 seconds uh, if all three shots land. Notwithstanding his scaling damage, which we can take a look here. It doesn't give us the values of that, but it is here, right? He does have scaling damage. Um, now, in terms of their abilities... Marcus is the only one with a net, so automatically that moves him way above the other two. But if we just let's not let's pretend the net doesn't exist. Marcus has two magic missiles. One of them deals scaling damage, which is the focus shot here. This other one, Amber Bow, is just kind of there. It's relatively expensive. 
what you pay for it. I'm not the biggest fan of these magic missile abilities to begin with, but you've got Moonbow, which is about the same as Amberbow, probably. Golden Blowpipe of Patui. Maybe it would be interesting. Sometimes I, sometime I ought to test all of these three kind of back-to-back. -back. I will say Golden Blowpipe is a little bit different. I don't think it has... A, I shouldn't talk about it too much, honestly. I haven't used any of the three of them too much because... I'm not, again, not that big of a fan of this ability type. They can sometimes bug out if your if your uh, Lord's not facing the right direction, or the animation doesn't play properly, or they get staggered. It's a little bit janky to use sometimes in practice, but uh, yeah, for Yoxiao, that's pretty much it. I mean, he has this extra uh, range buff, which still makes his range considerably shorter than these other two, which is, I guess, the main call out for him. He also has Slippery to give him even faster speed and more melee defense. So definitely the most escapable. Uh, Elithnar also has Slippery, it should be noted. Uh, he also has some support buffs, which the other two, I mean, the net is a support buff, but other than that, I mean, they don't have anything else. Uh, this loose here will affect reload skill of nearby units. He's also got uh, this 20, to, uh, 20 now percent missile resistance in an AoE. 55 meter effect range is pretty significant, and if you're worried about having a shootout, this might be something worth taking. 20% um, missile resistance is a decent amount. It's not a ton, but um, yeah, it, it certainly would help. This is another one, 55 meter effect range. You know, you get a little bit of extra melee defense and speed on your nearby units when your opponent gets close. If he's, again, leading a line of archers, this can be nice. It's pretty expensive, though, and Alithanar can very quickly become the most expensive of the three if you take the mislead and the slippery. So I would say fully kitted out Alithanar is not worth it. Um... Like, the realistic kit of what I would take, I probably wouldn't take Moonbow. Depending on the matchup, most likely not Stone of Midnight or Shadow Crown. Um, probably, I mean, one of his benefits is being very cheap. And if you really kit him down, maybe only take the Doppelganger. And if you have the extra points, maybe come in and grab Slippery. I mean, he can be very cost-effective at this lower price range. Um, Marcus doesn't have much besides the net. He's got his own little runaway type ability doesn't affect anyone else around him and then he's just got the two magic missiles which i mean if you're going to take either of them focus shot is definitely the better one to take in my opinion and you should only use it on low health targets it used to be completely broken but i think it's not quite as damaging now generally though i would say just these two it makes them 13 10 very cheap very cost effective and absolutely devastating in the right situation so hopefully you learned something hopefully you enjoyed if you like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification button every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again see you next time